You're listening to The Country Hour on ABC Radio New South Wales. Well, last week Victoria announced it would bring forward the closure of the uh, sector of the uh, native forestry sector by the end of the year. Foresters in the southeast of the state say they expected pressure to mount on New South Wales t- native timber industry as a result. Peter Rutherford is the Secretary of the South East Timber Association and told Josh Becker that phasing out native timber logging over the border will affect the pipeline of work for local contractors. When I saw the email yesterday afternoon, it came as an absolute shock that they were bringing it forward. On reflection, it's not a surprise because it does align with the uh, Western Australian decision to wipe out the industry next year. Uh, The real tragedy will be... Uh, when we get the next big fire season, uh, there will be very, very little uh, heavy earth moving equipment and other machinery that's been very important in past decades for firefighting. And uh, as the forests in Victoria are becoming increasingly loaded with fuels, uh, the intensity of the fires and the difficulty of controlling them will just get worse, not better. Yeah, it's it's just an absolute tragedy socially, environmentally and economically. The broader context, Victoria phasing out native logging, WA doing the same, what does that mean for the pressure that now comes to New South Wales as a focus? The Greens say it's it's a matter of if, not when, uh, for, for the New South Wales industry. Do you, do you agree with that? I would like to think they're wrong, but given... Uh, the political bastardry uh, that has surrounded the native forest industry for the last 40 years. Again, it will come as a shock if it comes out of the blue, um, but it won't come as a surprise if New South Wales, Queensland, Tasmania, in the end, uh, fall to a group of people who I think uh, and our association uh, thinks uh, are very short on uh, ethics when we simply transfer the impacts of our forest consumptions to offshore environments uh, where Sumatran tigers, orangutans and a whole host of other uh, species uh, will be adversely affected so that we can sit back and think we're clean and green. That's the tragedy of it all. Peter Rutherford, Secretary of the South East Timber Association, talking to Josh Becker. Well, last week's decision by the Victorian Government to bring forward the sector's closure by year's end has uh, worried uh, foresters, as we heard, across New South Wales, who think a similar decision here by the newly enacted Minns Government is inevitable. Industry bodies warn such a decision would leave many without work, trigger an exodus of infrastructure, which is vital to firefighting efforts, as we heard there, and come at an enormous cost to taxpayers as well. Last week, the Guardian claimed that the previous Perite government had actually sought analysis to determine the cost of ending native logging in the state, a revelation that Greens MP Sue Higginson told Tina Quinn should come as no surprise. No, that's absolutely right. So the $302 million is a forecast over a 10-year period and also includes a cost of expanding the plantation forest estate, something that would be a good investment for New South Wales. So realistically, you're looking at about 30 mil a year for 10 years. When you weigh that up in a cost-benefit analysis, at the moment to continue logging the public forest estate is costing anywhere up to nine, 12, 20 million dollars a year. And that's not even factoring in the subsidies that we've seen for the forestry industry post-disasters, post-fires, post-floods, etc., where we've been looking at around $80 million of subsidies over a 12-month period. We heard from the South East Timber Association this week and they raised concerns on a number of issues when it comes to, to this topic, one of which is job losses, of course. What sort of support would you propose for this kind of transition? The timber resource is diminishing rapidly across the forest estate. We're going to need a plan for the workers no matter what. What we're saying is we can walk those workers to the edge of the cliff and wonder what's at the bottom, or we can start being honest and supportive now. 
Victoria has just made this decision. It's brought the decision actually forward six years. Western Australia has made this decision already. We know that both those states are taking responsible action for workers, for the industry, but of mm. course, importantly, for the environment. Mm. Uh, but my question was, what would be the sort of support that you would propose for that kind of transition for the workers? We've uh, got over, as you've mentioned, that's over, that's close to 1,100 workers that would probably be affected in this state uh, alone, according to the WWF report. So what sort of support would you propose? Well, it's very important whenever you're doing a proper just transition that you actually consult those workers you look at do those workers want to continue in timber work if so we look at how we explain expand the plantation industry sector whether there is room already in the existing plantation sector we also know that there's a lot of skilled workers in this uh, sector there's a lot of very skilled machinery operation we know that the machinery operation operation sector across the whole state is uh, crying out for workers. We look at whether we can transition workers into those other fields. And of course, importantly, we also look at workers who are coming to the end of their career and whether or not they would like to bring that end forward and be remunerated and rewarded in a healthy prosperous manner to do that. South East Timber have also flagged that closing the sector would see the removal of heavy earth moving equipment, which has been quite crucial for firefighting efforts. Is the stripping of this kind of vital infrastructure not a concern as well? Of course, we never want to leave a region in any form of short supply in terms of response capacity, whether it's to, uh, you know, firefighting, disasters, management, etc. We don't need to do that. Um, I think that before we make that kind of suggestion that that will happen, we need to, again, have a very honest conversation about whether that is in fact true. Nobody wants to leave a region short in terms of response capacity for disasters. And I don't think that's the plan of any state government right now. You've said that it's not a matter of if, but when New South Wales does indeed follow Victoria's lead and brings an end to native forestry in the state. How do you see this transpiring? Uh, look, it's a political decision. We know that. The decision to log a forest, the decision not to log a forest is a political decision when it comes to the public native forest estate. So have you heard support on this from some of uh, your, your colleagues in Parliament? Uh, look, I know that there are people throughout the whole Parliament that have looked at the evidence, they've looked at the case. Whether you look at the economics, whether you look at the environmental considerations, but also when you look at the other potential economic benefits I, from I, the forest. I understand that, but has what I'm asking here is, has Labor actually expressed, anybody within the Labor ministry expressed support for this? Uh, at this point, Labor went to the election not on a platform of ending the logging of the public forest estate. But the reality is, Labor has only just got access to the books, to all of the data, all of the resource. And it's only now that the Labor Ministry has its hands on the levers and has its hands on the evidence in terms of the costs, the condition of the forest, and absolutely it's making inquiries. I asked a question in Parliament this week of the Treasurer. He is one of the single uh, shareholders of the Forestry Corporation as a state-owned corporation. He said he is absolutely looking very carefully at the condition of the state-owned Forestry Corporation. He's having to review that position. So I think Labor is being very honest right now, but there is also a crossbench. Labor is in a minority government, and there are people who were elected into the parliament, both in the upper house and the lower house, who walked into here on a platform of ending the logging of the public native forest estate, taking stronger action on climate change and doing better for nature. And so I think that realistically, 
the parliament, there is an alliance building within the parliament to do the right thing here by the environment, by the regions and by the industry. Green spokesperson for the environment, Sue Higginson, talking there to Tina Quinn.